Blue Cruise, I think, is clapping those cheeks right now. Is Blue Cruise a better value than Tesla's autopilot system? That's what we're gonna be looking at today. Ford people are very passionate about this. They say it's the best, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna see. I have a Model Y. This is a Mustang Mach-E. We're currently charging an Electrify America station. These things suck. Like this guy's here in his $100,000 Mercedes EQS. There were two Lucids here. Yeah, that's the third stall this guy is trying to get. Like I pulled into this one, it didn't work. I had to wait for the lady to pull out of this one. Like it's terrible. And you're gonna buy these cars and use this third party network. Like I can't imagine spending a hundred grand in a Mercedes and coming here to charge and not knowing if it's gonna work. It's just really bad. But anyways, we're currently charging in 114 kilowatts at a 53% state of charge in this 2023 Mach-E. Once we get enough charge, I'm going to take it on some roads that I know the Tesla has struggled on and just see directly in the the same segments of the road, how Blue Cruise compares to Autopilot. Blue Cruise initially cost $600 for a three-year subscription, and now it costs $2,100 for that same three-year subscription, or $75 a month, or $800 a year. So a lot of people are very unhappy with that. And the other thing is you can only use Blue Cruise on approved roads. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that with each car, the difference between the two. And at the end of the video, I will tell you whether or not I think Blue Cruise or Autopilot is better. Also, something you guys picked up on in the last video is the lag on this infotainment system. The refresh rate, something is not, see, it just, it takes a little bit. So. That's just another thing to note, whereas the Tesla infotainment is just, it's really snappy. So we're about to start this route. It's gonna be a two hour round trip. So it's gonna be 30 minutes on the 10 and 30 minutes on Interstate 8. So we're gonna be doing both of those. There's lots of areas in there where I know the Tesla will do some phantom braking. So we're gonna count each time it does it in the Mach-E, count each time it does it in the Tesla, and then I'm gonna show you some other things that differentiate these two features. All right, folks, we're on our way. We're on Interstate 10, freshly paved, lots of traffic, we're rolling. Now we are gonna start this at the exit 160 Chandler Boulevard. The test has begun. I'm a scientist. So here's what it looks like so far. So you can see it says hands-free, and then you can see here's our surroundings. Now what I like about Blue Cruise all right, I'm watching. See this sensor right here, I think it's looking at my eyes to make sure I'm not tech. It probably thinks this camera is a cell phone. I'm just guessing. So what I like about Blue Cruise, you get to change lanes. So I'm gonna hit the lane thing. Well, this, that's this official term, lane thing. Preparing lane change. I am watching, I'm watching. All right, well, that's not a good time to do a lane change because there's a family right there. All right, lane change. Preparing, here we go. Boom, no hands, lane change, and it's a money lane change. It's not this AI, hello, my, my, my name is T Tes Tesla bot. I will replace your husband, husband. It's not that, it's very smooth, well done. And this is up here because it's notifying us that we are good to do hands free. So that's what it's showing us. We'll show you another lane change. It did just drop our speed to 65, and uh, I didn't I didn't ask for that. So we're gonna jack the speed back up. There's our speed going back up to 75, which is the speed limit in this segment coming up. And as you can see, unfortunately in this video, I'm gonna anger three people. People in traffic, electric car Ford owners, all three of those groups, you're all gonna be angry at me, but sometimes that's what greatness takes, and that's, that's why this channel as the best automotive channel on the YouTube. So far, no strikes against Blue Cruise. We are cruising nicely. I also didn't realize Jim Farley is somehow related to Chris Farley. Uh, that's incredible. The other thing you can do is adjust your follow distance. That is done by clicking that button and then it will show us the different levels of follow. We're gonna go on level two. On this journey, I am going to see how many times Blue Cruise messes up. Now, some of you may be saying, but Ben, Blue Cruise isn't free and autopilot comes with every Tesla. That's correct. And in my opinion right now, and I'm, I'm open to changing my opinion, I'm not stuck in any camp, right? I'm not like you, right? You guys are, your mind's already made up. My mind gets made up new every day. So if Blue Cruise is better, I'll tell you it's better. If autopilot's better, I'll tell you it's better. Autopilot is free and I've had a great experience with it. Now, the only time I wanna take my Tesla and drive it off a cliff is when it phantom brakes multiple times or the one time I was in Pittsburgh, it phantom braked so bad 
that a dump truck behind me had to go over the white line here to possibly avoid hitting me. I almost drove it right into Three Rivers and walked over to Mrs. T's pierogies. I gotta say, Blue Cruise's money so far, not an issue. I don't know how far we've gone, no issues. And I love this lane change feature. We're just changing all day, baby, look at that. We're changing all day. And the other thing is, this is a new relationship for me. I don't have commitment issues with the Mach-E, whereas the Tesla, there's scar tissue. You know, we just talked about what happened to me in Pittsburgh, okay? Autopilot cheated on me again. No scar tissue here. I do feel very confident behind the wheel right now. See, I'm coming around. I'm coming around. You probably started this video and you're like, this prick's gonna say some, but I'm okay. This is, I have a lot of confidence in the Blue Cruise system right now. We're rolling. You watch the next video, I'm on the side of the road, the car rolled. So yeah, we're, we're doing okay, very comfortable. Love lane change feature. Here's what I'll say to Ford right now. This car costs $64,875 total with destination, okay? The top end Model Y, the performance, costs $54,000. Now, why do you think that this is worth $10,000 more than a Tesla Model Y performance? It is not. So I think Blue Cruise should be totally free. Do not bother your early adopters and loyal Ford customers, do not bother them with that give that to them, okay? I, I don't like the fact that you have to pay for this. It is very good. I don't personally know that, I don't know, 800 bucks, I'd probably be at 2100 though. No, not happening, but this is good so far. Interesting situation we're coming up on here. Oversized load because it's a house. We're gonna see how blue crews, we're still hands-free. Massive load there, look at that load. No issue, I wasn't sure what it would do but it did it nicely. All right, so one feature that I really like about this is, see, we're coming up on a slower vehicle here and the car is slowing down. So when I put the turn signal on, the car actually starts to speed up right now and makes a lane change just as I would as a human being. From what I remember, the Tesla is kind of slowly makes the change and then accelerates slowly. But to my memory, I think the Mach-E does a little better. The only thing I, I wish it would do that the, I know the Tesla does is it turns your turn signal off once you're in the lane that you're supposed to be in. So I have to go and touch it again and turn it off. Not a huge deal, but a nice convenient thing that the Tesla does. Also, this video is brought to you by Into the AM. I've been wearing their basic tees for many years now, almost three years we've had a partnership on the channel. They even did a collaboration with me, the Electric Desert T-shirt, which was very cool. These basic tees are very comfortable. They're well-priced. And if you use code Jeebs on their website, you will save 10% in addition to any other sale they have going on. So if they have a 30% off sale, you're gonna save 40% because you're here watching me. These are sincerely comfortable shirt. They have an athletic line now as well. Those are great for going to the gym or being an athlete, which none of you are. So go to intotheam.com, use code Jeebs to save an extra 10% off. You're going to really enjoy these t-shirts. Into the AM, thank you for sponsoring the video. Okay, so we're entering Route 8. I'm interested to see if it stays in Blue Cruise through this exit lane. I don't think, yeah. So this is not Blue Cruise because it says, you see how it has my hands on the wheel? It is also not slowing down, okay. All right, so I'm gonna count that as one mistake. I was not about to take that turn at uh, 77 miles per hour. So we'll count that as one, but a soft one. We'll call it a soft one, okay? Now let's see, Blue Cruise. Is it even approved on this road? Please God, if I drive all the, oh, Sheriff, sorry officer. Uh, sorry, officer, I'm making a video on Blue Cruise. <laughs> Heard of it? It's like you ever seen the back of a cop car, boy. All right, thankfully, Blue Cruise is... All right, I didn't say to go that fast. Piece of fuck. Okay, 76 miles per hour we're cruising at. The speed limit is 75. And we're going along here nicely. So really, the only issue I've had so far is on that exit ramp, the car decided to continue pace. I wasn't willing to uh, roll the car and die to see if it would slow down. So we're giving it a soft negative one so far. Other than that, very solid, very confidence inspiring, no scar tissue, no scar tissue. I, I think what I'm realizing, there's a portage on in the middle of the desert. I think what I'm realizing is my, my Tesla's a whore. See this section of road right here, Exit 172, Thornton Road exit area. It's dead flat, dead straight, and we're cruising on Blue Cruise, no issues. This is where the Tesla screws up. 
It's like, doot, doot. this is where you're like, screw that, I'm just gonna drive the car. Blue Cruise, I think, is clapping those cheeks right now. Because we're smooth. I don't know if it's like the Mirage effect where, you know, I, I don't know why. I'm not an engineer. We're going along nicely here, you know? And also, right here, okay, see this? See this segment of roads, how it just came from an exit lane and merged, or a merging lane that came together? Blue Cruise does a nice job of staying centered like in the lane and knowing that it doesn't need to get over. Tesla now does that well. There was a long time though where it would like go back and forth between lanes. That's uh, another impressive part of Blue Cruise. All right, we just got to our turnaround point. Not a single issue. Vapor Blue Mustang Mach-E. That was relaxing. No stress. This new relationship is very nice with AI driving. All right, so now we're gonna drive back. We're gonna get in the Tesla. We're gonna do the exact same route and see if that has any issues. I think it's most likely going to, but uh, hey, we gotta prove it. Now here's something that does need to be noted. So we're on a, not a side street, but it's certainly not a highway either. You can see that if I go to activate Blue Cruise or active cruise control or whatever, it will not activate. It says adaptive cruise control is not available. Whereas in my Tesla, it's just a, like slightly more hesitant to get up to speed and change lanes like as a humanoid would. Like it, it just kind of, it delays until the, it's like clear in the lane and then it goes. Whereas Blue Cruise was like, all right, here we go. While we just had that great experience with Blue Cruise on the interstate, I'm on the 347 headed towards Maricopa in Arizona, flat, wide open road, and all I wanna do is set cruise control, okay? I can't do that. It just says adaptive cruise unavailable. So I even turned it off, hit it again. Not letting me use it. Just says adaptive cruise unavailable. I, I turned off lane keep assist, I turned it on there, and it just says unavailable. So why can I not use the cruise control? That's a huge issue. Like. It's just cruise control. I'm not asking the car to drive itself. I just want to comfortably sit here and not have to rest my foot on the electric pedal. Annoying, to say the least. Yeah, will not let me use cruise control on a basic straightaway road. So that's a big problem. It should be able to use its dynamic cruise and not steer itself. I don't know. So I see a lot of funny things on the side of the road. I was heading this way down here and I see this. <laughs> we have there's a gaming chair and uh yeah so let's just do a little review from the side of the road very comfortable inside the car sound system not as good as the model y blue cruise excellent doesn't allow me to use even adaptive cruise control when i'm on a road like this that isn't approved so there's good and there's bad and we got this gaming chair here which i love there's a red crayon down there too i told you you can furnish your house off the side of an Arizona highway, and this further proves that. You can even furnish your gaming room. All right, back in the car. We're off and running in the Tesla, baby. Look at us. We're lined up. That means autopilot is engaged. Now, if you're not familiar, to engage autopilot, what you do is you double tap, and then boom, it centers up. And when these lines show up, that means autopilot is engaged. Also, this screen is so much nicer than the Mustang, give you real feedback on uh, just your driving habits and what's consuming the most energy. So we're off and running. Let's see how many mistakes this thing makes. Will it make zero? Uh, I doubt it. All right, so right off the bat, if I wanna change lanes, I have to do it on my own. Now, when I just change lanes, it left my cruise control at the speed I was going, but I do have to re-engage autopilot by double tapping. So now we're good to go. Whereas Blue Cruise, it changes lanes for you. However, Blue Cruise is a paid subscription. So if I were to go to Enhanced Autopilot, I could change lanes for $6,000. Yes, the Tesla can change lanes, but Autopilot free with every Tesla, it does not change lanes for you. So that's a minor difference. Again, this is the difference between a paid service and something that comes with the car. Now, as far as full self-driving goes, Full self-driving has a ton more capability than Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise is not even close. I had, my friend took me the other day in uh, full self-driving and he has Homelink as well. So Homelink is just a garage door opener and he has his friend's gate code put into Homelink. So full self-driving, we didn't touch the steering wheel the entire way to the destination. And when we got to the gated community, it knew the code and set the gate code off and opened the gate for us and then proceeded to go through. 
So there's functionality out there like that. When I saw that, I was like, whoa, like that's, that's a big deal. That's pretty cool. Blue Cruise does not have that type of autonomy yet. And I don't know if that's the direction they're looking to go or whatever, or if it's more of a highway thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. Still on I-10, no issues on this segment yet. No one in front of me, close in front of me. And we're going 75 miles per hour. No signs of phantom braking yet. Another autopilot feature that I like, you can see we have an 18 wheeler right here. The car will actually edge itself to the left side of the lane. See it's sensing the truck there. So it edges itself to the left side of the lane and then re-centers after you get past the truck just to give you a little bit more room. Blue Cruise seem to like to hug the middle lane and kind of bounce in between lanes a little bit. Tesla's very good at staying centered. And then just like little details like that to give you a little more space around an 18 wheeler, nice feature. Still no signs of phantom braking, 23 miles left on Interstate 10. Then we will get onto Interstate 8, which is a Tesla breaker that will make you return your Tesla. You also notice as I'm cruising around here, we have this sunshade from Vion Parts. So Vion, it was Tamay. It's a, it's a higher end version of Tamay. They're able to focus now more on the US market and other markets that they ship to and making higher quality products at even at still a very competitive price. I needed this sunshade for Arizona. Like it's incredible. All this glass in here turns it into a greenhouse and this is helping significantly. Like, and it's very, very solid. These clips, you put these clips on, you slide them in, in these areas. It clips just above roof liner and it's very solid. They were able to use like a thicker aluminum to reduce sags. You can see it's very rigid. There's no sag in the middle there and it's only 69 bucks and you can use my code and save an extra 10% on their website. So I'll have them linked in the description. Tamay has been a huge partner of the channel for years and now it's Vion. So that's the name of it. New products, check it out. And it's absolutely necessary, especially for summer road trips. It's making a huge difference right now. All right, so here we come up to this exit. Uh, holy sh! And I think we got air on that. Jesus. Coming up to an exit here, speed limit 75. We're going 78 miles per hour. I'm interested to see if the Tesla, it should slow down here. Blue Cruise did not, but we should slow down. We should be able to make this. All right, autopilot is on. We are coming in at 79 miles per hour. All right, I took over there. All right, so neither Tesla or Blue Cruise, we were just gonna drive off right off the interstate. All right, so they're tied so far. They both did not do great on that exit. Not exactly sure why, but it's a tie ball game, folks. Now we've entered the road where there, there's generally just Teslas on the side of the road because people got so much uh, phantom braking that they just, they just left and they said, I'd rather walk. So now we're on Interstate 8. We're gonna see how the Tesla does in autopilot with any mistakes for phantom braking that it could possibly make. All right, past the Thornton Road exit. See, all right, totally flat here. I can just feel something coming. I'm gonna just try and record a little bit and see if we can actually capture it so you can see what the car does. I'm actually gonna try and let it let it go. So if the car phantom brakes, I'm gonna let it go totally and see if it comes to a complete stop or what it's going to do. I've never done that before, seeing what the end result is. So we'll kinda sit the camera here and see what happens. The other thing to note about autopilot, whereas Blue Cruise is like, it says hands-free, it says that. Autopilot always says to keep a hand on the wheel. And I think full self-driving is kind of the same way. They want you to just kind of be there. But honestly, I mean, I, I would rather be there anyways. I don't really have full trust in any car yet to just, you know, go to bed in the back. I saw Ford, I, so I went on Ford's website and just looked up a couple things on Blue Cruise. And their example of it, I don't know if they were deaf, I guess they were deaf, I don't know. They were using sign language, so they put Blue Cruise on and now they're able to talk because they have Blue Cruise to each other. It's like, guys, using people's disabilities to market a car, oh my God. That's, that's America though, we'll, we'll go to any level to sell something. All right, I'm actually surprised we haven't uh, hit a section yet where we need to take control, but I guess that's a good thing. All right, we're starting to get some, it didn't phantom break it, but it did slow a little bit. Nice smooth lane merge there. 
Tesla's gotten so much better at that, so that's good. Imagine this, I'm sitting here on this road driving for a YouTube video, waiting for this car to jerk me forward. How many people do you know that waits for a car to jerk them for a job? Not many. So, I make this video and I try to tell you guys that like, look, it's gonna be a mess with autopilot. I drive up that road and I didn't have a single issue. Now I've had people email me. I've even driven up Route 8 before, like when I went to that Dateland in that video, there was phantom braking. But today, on the same day that I tested the Mach-E and tested my Model Y, Blue Cruise versus Autopilot, I had no issues. So we're tied. They both had an issue on that exit ramp, and here's why I think Autopilot has the advantage. Here's the difference is I am on this road again where I was not allowed to use Blue Cruise because I guess it's not an approved Blue Cruise road and I'm able to use autopilot. I'm able to just sit here and it's like this on any road in the country, even some dirt roads it works on. So that's where I see the huge value in autopilot is because you can use it everywhere. You can use it in traffic on on surface streets you can obviously use it on highways and then you have the ability if you want to do six thousand dollars for enhanced autopilot and fifteen thousand dollars for full self-driving like i've always said you know i it, it, full self-driving is not for me a lot of people like it and they see a huge value in it tesla stock just went up a lot because of their ai future i for me i, I just like driving the car and autopilot's good enough so that's like my honest answer. Like I wouldn't recommend someone goes and spends 15 grand on full self-driving, especially because you can't transfer that license to your next Tesla. And f Tesla doesn't value it when you go to trade your car in. My understanding is they give you like nothing more for it. So if you have a $20,000 car, let's say your Model 3 is 20 grand for trade-in, but you have full, you've purchased full self-driving for $15,000, they're not gonna then give you $35,000, they're gonna give you 20. And if Tesla doesn't value it, like at the end of the, you selling your car, then why should we? That's, that's my main issue with spending 15 grand on that. That's insane, I would never spend that. I would even question spending five grand on full self-driving. So that's it. Basically a tie ball game in terms of our testing. Tesla gets the one up because I'm able to use it and it autopilot which comes with every Tesla on any road that I'm driving on. So, oh, we're getting some phantom braking. Here we go. All right, now we're accelerating again. But again, I'm, a I'm able to use it. So you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if I'm missing anything with Blue Cruise. Every time I say I don't think that full self-driving is worth it, I'll get like a couple messages from people who are like, stop saying that. I'm like, what, stop saying my opinion? I left corporate America so I didn't have to report to a manager or boss. So if you think that I'm gonna listen to your comments to not say something, you're out of your mind. Now, if you wanna see a solo review of that Mach-E going deeper into the features of the car, you can click this video right here. That'll be very helpful. I think you'll enjoy it and we'll see you next time.